Hello YouTubers and welcome to Novus Talks with me your host Novus Corvius. And as you can tell from the title we're going to be reacting to a rather currently famous video that's going around in relation to Metroid. And if you're in any way shape or form a fan of Metroid you've probably seen this video already. It came out a few days ago and as you can tell this video is going to be sort of my response to it. But rather than do a complete whole response to everything I decided there was one thing in particular I wanted to focus on, um, mainly because uh, the 10th anniversary of Metroid Other M is coming out, is coming up on in August, and I plan to do my own video and reflections and thoughts on it then. So I want to save all my thoughts for that video that I'm planning to do then. Um, I just decided to do this video because after I watched this, there's one thing in particular that I guess two things really that stuck out to me that no one else is kind of bringing up or mentioning and um, that is in relation to the Metroids themselves and Fantoon and Mother Brain that um, the fellow in this video brings up. Um, he rather excellently as he delves through the story and the translations he shows how... Me so we all know how Metroids have the ability to transfer life energy from one being to another. We've seen it happen in Super Metroid. He also brings up that they can transfer uh, mindsets and emotions and things like this to people. And it was something that, even though it's in the game, it is another M, it's not apparent in the English translation for it. Because I played in, I played other M a few times, I've never noticed any of these details because the way the wording has been phrased but in the Japanese version it is really clear all this sort of stuff about Metroids and how they can transfer abilities and stuff that's why Samus can dodge more acrobatically than ever her acrobatic skills have been enhanced a lot more that's why um, she the concentration move she does the regenerates health that's a result of the Metroid and this wasn't mentioned in the video, but I believe this to be the case as well. Her suit, you know, everyone br brings up as one of the complaints about other M is the suit design. Why does Samus look like this in pretty much every other game? As close enough to this, like, in every other game, but then in other M, she's more sort of slender and the shoulders are more round and don't have the jagged bits extending. And the cannon is a bit different as well. Why is that? And I think probably because of the Metroid. Now that I think about it, <clears throat> the Metroid probably... So we know the various suit is modular in design. Um, <clears throat> items that get added to it, enhance and can change its look. We've seen it happen many times. The Light of Aether turned it into the Light Suit. The PED made it look completely different as well. So we've seen before in many other Metroid games how the various suit can change radically depending on whatever item is being equipped or added to it. And I believe the Metroid's life force, or when it was draining Mother Brain's life force and putting it into Samus, I guess probably altered the suit. I mean, it gave her the hyper beam and new abilities such as like lethal strike and concentration. So it would make sense if it sort of temporarily buffed up her suit, so to speak. And while that's a fine theory and all, obviously many of you might be asking, if this is the case, why didn't we see her have the suit in Fusion, you know? In Fusion, she has the typical normal various suit design. And that question goes for every Metroid game, when you think about it. She always loses abilities and suits at the end of every game. So, I mean, is that really an issue? I mean, look at Metroid Prime 3. She had the PED suit on phase, but then when you see her in the gunship afterwards, she doesn't. Um, so, and Samus is always losing abilities in between games, you know, she'll have uh, missiles in one game, but starting in the next game she won't, you know. So, <clears throat> this is something that's never explained, and in the story I always just say to myself that she never loses abilities, that she retains them, and that it's only in the gameplay stake that she loses them. Uh, for the most part, there are exceptions, Prime 1 and 2 and other M, but still. 
So that's my explanation on her suit. I believe the other M suit was temporarily changed by the Metroid's effect on her, and then sometime between other M and Fusion, everything went back to normal. I don't know how it's science fiction. Nothing makes sense. You just roll with it, I guess. But that's my theory anyway. Moving on from that, um, as interesting as uh, as interesting as that is, the the other thing I want to talk about was. Um, he talks about uh, Mother Brain and consciousness and stuff in relation to Fantoon. Fantoon is a character that doesn't have any explanation and, well, extremely limited explanation, which is weird for a character that pretty much caused all the major events in the games to happen. I mean, to be honest, Fantoon would, way, would make a way better villain than Ridley did. Um, but that's a topic for a whole other time. Fantoon in Other M, in the concept art and stuff, is depicted as a giant who's so big, uh, his full body can't exist in one dimension. So the Fantoon you fight is just his head upwards, which is, you know, a really interesting and cool concept and makes you really want to see the full form of him. Um, but when Super Metroid came out, the only explanation for him, there was two explanations. One in the Japanese version of the manual for Super Metroid described him as the ghost of the wrecked ship. Doesn't make any sense. Uh, but then the English version offered a way different explanation. That he was Mother Brain's consciousness and uh, become manifest. And that he's caused the ghosts of the crew of the wrecked ship to turn into those coverns as well. Um, he brings up in the video um, the potential that Fantoon is actually some sort of reincarnation of Mother Brain. My problem with this is this kind of goes against the, the giant interdimensional theory in um, Other M, unless they're trying to say that consciousness ascends to like a whole other dimension and its form takes on the shape of Fantoon or whatever. Um, but he mentions Fantoon in Super Metroid is the I say reincarnation, maybe that's not the exact way of describing it, but he is the spiritual form of Mother Brain's consciousness. That is Mother Brain that was killed in Zero Mission. What confused me here is that I always presumed Mother Brain and Zero Mission and Mother Brain and Super Metroid were the exact same entity, just rebuilt, but I guess there are two completely different entities. Um, which kind of undermines Super Metroid, I feel, but... Whatever, I will roll with it. But here's my problem with this. He, he also goes on to say, um, that's why Fantoon showed up in Other M, is MB was destroyed, and since she's like Mother Brain, her consciousness became Fantoon, or summoned Fantoon, or whatever. Um, he says then after this that basically any AI consciousness, or anything that's psychic enough, were the words he used, uh, would summon or trigger Fantoon to appear. Here's the issue. Um, Mother Brain and MB are not the only AIs to have been killed throughout the course of the series. If this is the case, then what about Aurora Unit 313? The Aurora Units are... I don't know if they're really psychic or aware. He does have that point, but they are aware to an extent. So does that mean after the destruction of Phase, Fantoon should be lurking around there. Are we going to fight Fantoon in Metroid Prime 4? That would be phenomenal. Um, I hope we do, but probably not. Um, what about Metroid Prime Federation Force when Master Brain was destroyed? Should there be Fantoon there? I mean, yeah, it wasn't that AI wasn't sentient or anything, but it was still an AI. Um, but I'm going to assume for the sake of simplicity that he's referring to AI that is self-aware and psychic and think for itself, which would just be Mother Brain then, since the Aurora units can't think outside of their programming realistically. Um, but then it brings up the question of Fantoon's connection to Metroids, because Metroids were made malevolent by Mother Brain's thought processes and the beta waves that came from her consciousness, which is why they were evil in Zero Mission, and why the baby was going 
crazy in Super Metroid. Um, he says, okay, since Metroids can transfer emotions and stuff, this is why <clears throat> MB, when interacting with Metroids, became sort of more human and more um, self-aware. I don't know how, because these Metroids weren't feeding on people, so I don't know how they were transferring emotions or anything to her, but maybe they don't need to transfer from killing one being to another. I don't know how it works. Um, but if that's the case, if her self-awareness comes from Metroids, and Fantoon's existence comes from her death, what is Fantoon's connection to the Metroids? And... Another question, actually, going back to, I know I'm going all over the place here, but it just came into my mind, was... I mentioned about all the AIs. If this, if Super Metroid's mother brain is not the same mother brain as Zero Mission, then... Why isn't there a Fantoon in... After Zebus has exploded? Because... Mother brain in the... Zero Mission was... Sentient and self-aware, and then Fantoon exists afterwards. Are they trying to suggest that Super Metroid's mother brain wasn't self-aware and was behaving more like a computer or something? I don't really know. I mean, you can say these things and it does make sense, sort of. Um, but it's just a lot to think of. Like, when I watched this video yesterday, I was completely overloaded and mind blown with information because this opens up a whole, whole other side to the Metroid lore that we've never looked at before. And that future games can go in like a S Metroid Dread, whenever it does happen, because I do believe it's happening, could potentially show us more of the relationship between Metroids and humans and artificial intelligence and what, how exactly Metroids deliver emotions and mindsets to people. If it's not through killing one creature and then implanting it in another, then how was it done, you know? It, it, it blows my mind to think about. Um, realistically though, I feel like a sequel to Fusion would probably just skip over all that and just be like, hey, Metroids are evil, they're cloned again, you must kill them. Most likely, but we can hope that Nintendo will throw more into the lore eventually. Um, but man, it, it is a lot to think about. Um, and this also brings up something Adam in um, Metroid Fusion. I know he isn't exactly an AI. His actual consciousness is in the computer. So I guess technically an AI, but how does that, like, shouldn't Fantoon be there then as well? Like if this Adam AI gets destroyed, will Fantoon show up? How, how does it work, you know? This is my issue with the Theory, and don't get me wrong, it is an excellent theory because this has completely changed the way I think of Metroids and Mother Brain. Um, because now there's this whole other side to it that's very minimally teased at in the games that really isn't explored enough. And I am really curious right now to see how this goes forward. Um, I, I really can't think of how, unless it's like the Metroid itself transfers mindsets and emotions into people without interacting with other creatures. That's the only way I could think of it. Um, I suppose that's probably why the game is called Other M, which stands for Mother, if you didn't know. Um, that has got to do with like the mother-child bond relationship MB had with the Metroids and that Sam's had with the Metroids. I I guess that's the case. It's the relationship between um, mother and child that impacts this or something like that. I really don't know, especially since MB is sort of like a child to Madeline Bergman. Um, I know that this, there really isn't a point to this. I'm just throwing this out there rhetorically, trying to think of anything myself really here to say about it but god this, this is so fascinating and like i am completely mind blown thinking about this um even though i prefer to think of fantoon as a um, malevolent entity on his own the whole thing about um him being connected to mother brain just sort of changes it 
And that does bring up one plot hole with the games, if that theory is true. The wrecked ship is a Chozo ship that was orbiting Zebus, and Fantoon showed up while the Chozo were flying past Zebus, and he killed everyone on board, or most of them anyway. And that's how they crashed on Zebus, and how the Chozo populated the planet. I presume you see the problem here. Fantoon attacked this ship, but Mother Brain didn't exist at the time. Or, if Mother Brain existed on the ship, then how does Fantoon exist? Is it that he just exists because of her psychic awareness? Or does this consciousness have to be destroyed for Fantoon to exist? You know, it, it isn't clear at all. Um, off the top of my head, I mean, I get if we're going with the consciousness theory, it would imply that Fantoon sort of is made summoned by any sort of higher form of thinking by an AI, I guess. That's really the only way I can think of it, but we don't know if Mother Brain was created before the Chozo went to Zebus. And considering that the Chozo on Alicia and the Chozo on Talon 4 never mentioned or had Mother Brain with them, it's implied either they created Mother Brain on their way to Zebus or on Zebus, as we all originally thought. Um, I really don't know. I, I would need further time to go through all this. Um, it is a lot to think about. Um, but yeah, I, I don't think I can add anything else on top of that. I'm kind of, <laughs> I am mind blown at the moment the further I think about this. Uh, so for now, I'll leave it there. Um, let me know your guys' um, thoughts and opinions down in the comment section below. Have you seen this video? Uh, what do you think about this whole dynamic between Metroids and artificial intelligence. What do you think Fantoon actually is? Um, do you think he is the reincarnation of Mother Brain? Do you think he's existed before? Does he have no connection? What's his connection to the Metroids? Um, let me know all of that down in the comment section below. And to anyone who's new to the channel, I've done plenty of other Metroid videos. I also do videos talking about Pretty much any major Nintendo news that comes out. So I also do videos on movies and other things that interest me that um, when things come up. So if any of that interests you, um, please like and share and subscribe. And I hope you check out some of my other videos. And please show them around to anyone uh, you know that might be interested. So yeah, with that all said, thank you all for watching and um, please subscribe. Nova Scores out.